Gott, help. I need some help. Help me. Help. You exploit them and spread whatever problems they have to the whole world. You think that's helping? <laughs> Why don't we say that every day? Why can't we say it more often? I just love you. I just want to go to the rooftops and scream, I love my best friend. Howdy, y'all. I hope you're doing well. I'm Willard, and you're listening to Twinkle Dads, an emo advice show. The gist of the show is simple. Listeners, hopefully you, send in questions asking us for personal advice. It could be about anything and everything. School, work, love, life, relationships, philosophical quandaries, whatever it may be. We talk about and answer them at length. And then we pair it with a few songs that we believe will help you cope with your feelings about the situation. Uh, A lot of that is predicated on the belief that human empathy is one of the greatest things we have, because I truly believe so. You know, the ability to care so deeply for one another and to harbor such strong feelings, whether it be, you know, good feelings like happiness and love or sad feelings like anger hatred and regret regret the ability to just like you know live life to the fullest emotionally for yourself and for another is just so fucking sick however you know let's say you're going through something and you don't agree with it you know you're you're not caring for yourself you're thinking that your thoughts are stupid how you're handling it is stupid and you're trying to like repress how you feel you know, if, if you're not able to care for yourself in that s- situation, then how are you able to care for another person when they're in that situation? You know, we want to be here for you so you can be there for yourself. If you'd like to send in a question asking for personal advice to be answered on a future episode, you can do one of three things. You could email me at twinkledad69 at gmail.com. DM me on Twitter and or Instagram at Emo Advice Show or text me at 775-710-5150. All that information will be in the bio. But once again, twinkledad69 at gmail.com at Emo Advice Show on Twitter and Instagram and 775-710-5150. We love you. We care about you. And most importantly, we want you to do well. Today, we have a very lovely interview with Greg Mendez, who recently just released his self-titled album on Forge Artifact and Devil Town Tapes. Uh, If you are at all involved with music Twitter, you've seen this album and Greg's work being pushed tenfold. You know, it truly is a word of mouth. Uh, movement a- as we talk about later in the interview yeah i i discovered the album in a very particular way through uh swim camps uh swim camp spotify bio and it's worth it you know it makes sense why people are telling other people that this album kicks ass because it does kick ass and i want you to know that the self-titled is just truly incredible and you know, because from the, it like it represents a scene both in a broader and specific sense. In a broader sense, you have like the what we know as Philly lo lo fi indie, you know, on a wide scope, such as Alex G, and not Philly, but like Elliot Smith. But then you know you can dig deeper to Greg's ties to Shannon Moser, Swim Camp, there. You know, other incredible musicians who are putting out just these very honest folk songs and that truly just and I'll say it again, just fucking kick ass. You know, and it it was just very cool to see from 
when I was booking this interview to this interview being conducted, seemingly the exposure that it got, you know, on the merits of how good it was, you know, not through paid promotion, that the day before uh, NPR and Bandcamp Today put out articles, and then right before uh, a podcast, better yet, that I've been listening to since a young teen, dropped an interview with him. And, you know, it's just really cool to see, like, you know, art itself being honored. And I think what I love most about our discussion in the interview and you know, how the questions get answered is, you know, it very much was honest about the role of being a public figure and a musician. Yeah, when you're able to create a piece of art that is so well received, you know, how how do you pay attention to yourself separate from that you know how do you create distance while knowing how to hold it close yeah i hope that didn't sound like word salad by any means but looking back on it i'm just very very happy and relieved that you know the conversation went the way it did so thank you so much to greg thank you so much to the musicians that he shouted out. And if you haven't, I think it's quite necessary to listen to the self-titled record. Uh, first, I'm going to play the track that seemingly everybody's talking about. It's Maria. For good reason, everybody's talking about it. And then we'll get into the interview. So once again, this is Maria by Greg Mendez off of his self-titled. And then we'll talk to you oh so soon. Bye-bye now. doing today i'm pretty good how are you that's good i'm doing pretty well uh i guess to start us off as a little icebreaker question if you had to describe how you've been since uh the release of your self-titled album on may 5th as a flavor of toothpaste which would you pick and why Mm. baking soda (laughs) <laughs> um, i don't know why but well it's been a it's been a weird time with like um that coinciding with some like stuff that's been going on in my personal life that's like difficult stuff so it's been a 
So I feel like, uh, you know, baking soda and mint is this weird like flavor combination that you can't really put your finger on. Mm -hmm. Like the arm and hammer, you know? Yeah. Yeah. No, that's fair. Like quite a contrast, you know? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So yeah, let's get talking about, um, I guess the albums, I see that on the Bandcamp notes, it says uh, recorded March 2021 20, to January of 22. And so I guess just like, you know, what's the background to it? Like what started the recording process? Like why did it take like nearly a year? And like what, how did you decide to like bring all these tracks together? Um, I don't know. It just kind of started. Um it just kind of started happening. That's kind of how they all happen. I feel like, um, honestly, I think that like someone from a, a record label started talking to me, not the ones that it came out on. And I was like, it's already like kind of ready to record. So I was like, okay, let me just start recording. And, um, yeah, this just kind of entered that like mode, I guess. Um, and it took a long time because I just had a lot of other stuff going on, like work and stuff. And it like I ended up like being on workers comp for a while. And that like was the thing that allowed me to have a lot more time to actually make it. But um, yeah, I guess I kind of just like to like, even, even then when I was like, you know, just collecting a check and pretty much just like sitting at home, like I kind of lately like past the past two records at least just like to take my time and you know like go in and like I just do it at home so if I just try for like an hour or whatever and if I'm not like getting good takes I don't find it really helpful to like you know sweat through it and just like try and force myself because then I just waste like eight hours or whatever and I just kind of you know I'm like okay it's not happening today and then I you know give a little space and then come back Right. Yeah. Um, yeah. Going on that uh, workman's uh, your your comment about workman's comp because it's like, I guess uh, it's been uh, documented uh, many of times like on this press uh, press cycle that that happened after getting uh, concussed during a construction job and I've like seen people like try to like make or like try to make the point that like you know it's like you know you're concussed you're not quote unquote of right mind so these songs are like spilling out of your brain which like you know like that makes sense but also there's just uh a good chance with like being concussed that you're just like dizzy as fuck like you know like the lights are like too bright so i guess did like do like the concussion symptoms if there were any like it like i'm trying to think like not interfere with the process but like you know like how did that play or was it really just like not too pressing of a thing that you're able to like kind of record like smoothly um it definitely hindered it actually um especially in the beginning but like um for a lot of it like because i was it was just it was actually a couple concussions and like then like i got really sick susceptible to it so anytime i'd like bump my head or something so like part of the reason i was out for so long wasn't necessarily like there were days where i wasn't having symptoms at all but like I had to convince these doctors that like, as soon as I go back to work, like it's going to happen again if they don't give me enough time. Um, so yeah, like there were days with like, if I was having bad symptoms where I wouldn't, wouldn't be able to do anything, but like for some of it, you know, I was just, you know, they, they come, it was like, you know, ebbs and flows, I guess, or like ups and downs. Um, and still is, but yeah, it wasn't like, I wouldn't say that it, uh, I would definitely say that it hindered it rather than, um, you know, I mean, some of like, you know, the, the one song Maria, like I did write when I was like feeling really like when I was having a lot of symptoms, but I don't think that, uh, it helped. 
<laughs> yeah, that's uh that's absolutely fair cuz I can't even like imagine doing much during like while having like concussion symptoms, you know. <laughs> Yeah, I think that definitely added to it taking so long. It's like there were definitely, you know, periods where like where I just was wasn't able to do anything. Right. Well, I, I'm glad to hear that you're on like the rebound of it all, because uh, that sounds quite uh, horrible or just kind of like terrible to go through. Yeah, but... it definitely would have been good. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Um, yeah, and I guess the other question I have is, um, like, the dates, like, the actual, like, writing of these songs, uh, they span back to 14 years, because I think the earliest I can spot is Hoping You're Doing Okay, the final track of being a demo back in 2009, and um, I guess just, like, what was the decision to recontextualize these tracks and like why now um i don't know i just kind of like still thought i just started thinking about it again um i don't think there's any real like thematic reasoning or anything like i don't really think like that when i'm working on something i just i'm just like oh this feels like it might uh work and it was just one of those songs that i you know, and I had like sort of recently, I guess, you know, like, well, maybe like five years ago, like just, you know, gotten some of those old like recordings from a friend of mine who still had them. And like, it, it was just that one was just like still on my mind for some reason. And I wasn't happy with the old recording and like some of the words and stuff. So, mm -hmm. yeah, this, uh, the new recording of it, I think, is, like, not only feels like a, a proper fit to, like, end the album, but I think, like, um, especially, like, in comparison to the home, like, to the version of it on home videos, where it's just, like, I like how stripped back it is, because it just, like, you know, it's, like, that vulnerability or, like, that um, intimacy to it. Uh, yeah, and I actually tried to, like, add more stuff to it. And then, you know, as in the, my friend who, like, helped me with recording the drums, you know, really wanted me to, like, replicate the original one. And he started, like, so I was, like, you know, playing some of those drum parts and stuff. And it just, like, wasn't feeling good to me. And so I just, just uh, decided to just keep it like that. But... Hell yeah. And uh, I guess just like, were you happy with the final pro uh, product? Of course, I mean, it is included, so I assume yeah. so, but. Yeah, I mean, yeah, I think so. I think it's, I think it's the song, you know? <laughs> yeah. For. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and I guess it's the, uh, uh, going on from that is, uh, you know, you have songs like that or like just spanning over the past four years that were like written during the time of you know the time of your addiction you have songs about addiction of course like i feel like maria is the one that like everyone talks about and like for good reason because it's just um i think it's just sick as fuck i i think personally like what i love about it is um like looking at the uh, lyrics they're like you know i love when lyrics have like quotations or like are like telling stories because there's like no actual way to like verbalize that like you can't hear someone like speak a quotation yeah. <laughs> mark <laughs> and so like i guess it's like looking at it i'm like oh that's awesome but um you know, I've seen it and it's like, especially like in the Bandcamp feature where everything that happened, like everything down to the, uh, my auntie let us in, her name was Mendez, no relation, just kind of got like, you know, like, oh, like that is a story. Like Maria is a thing that happened. And I guess just like, you know, when you're like kind of reflecting on times that you've essentially, uh, 
moved on from now since uh, I guess as it put you're now California sober like how does it feel to perform these songs um it feels fine <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah. I don't know it kind of I kind of don't really think about it too much honestly like I just you know I just play the songs and like I don't get um like I feel them but it's not like uh I don't know. It doesn't feel like I'm like talking about it in therapy or something. It feels different than that. Um, I think, right. I mean, yeah, I, I just, I don't know. I yeah. don't know. They, st they still feel like, um, I mean, a lot of them, like they kind of feel like I'm not. And, and some of them aren't like necessarily exactly about me. And it, like the whole, it kind of just feels like I'm just, you know, just singing them, if that makes sense yeah and i think like too it's like the thing with like you know if you get like enough time and separation between it like you know there's a thing about talking about scars versus like wounds because it's not like this like open gaping thing like you said that you would like have to talk about in therapy but more so like oh this is just like a thing you know it's like different from me at this moment so yeah i mean it, i think you know it feels it feels good to sing them um mm -hmm. you know it feels good when people relate to it and like like i don't think it's like i don't know i guess sometimes like people might wonder if it's like painful or something and it's it's really not to sing the songs for me at least yeah. Uh, and that's really good to hear. I'm like really very uh, glad to hear that. Um, and I guess just like on so is like like not on so, but uh, so on. It's uh, I guess the follow up question is like, is it any diff? Like, how does it feel to like sell these songs? You know, to talk about their backstories at length, have people like react strongly to it? Is it like the similar thing where it's like? You know, it's good that these tracks like exist, but you like don't really have a feeling about them, nor do you have like a feeling when people just kind of like bring them up to you, if that makes sense. Um, it feels uh I guess I have mixed feelings about it kind of like, you know, I think that well, I think that one of the cool things about songs is that um they can mean anything to anybody like people can take different things from them so it does feel kind of weird when um people assume things about them but it's also kind of just the nature of it being a song so mm -hmm. um but i guess like one of the things that i struggle with a little bit is like being like a singer songwriter or whatever and like having it out under my own name that it's kind of like there's this assumption that like i'm like you know like that it's like i'm like an autobiography or a memoir or something and like you know some of it is and some of it is just not so mm -hmm. <laughs> but um you know i guess i guess that doesn't really matter in the scheme of things to to me um or i try to you know think of it as like you know they're all like real in a sense and like i just want you know i just want people to like them <laughs> yeah <laughs> i mean well people are like you know just like fucking loving them essentially like as we talked about because it's just like you know like i i just go on like twitter or instagram and it's like just a new thing where it's like does anybody else greg mendez self-titled question mark question mark <laughs> and it's just like already getting like seven retweets like 40 likes and it's just like yeah it's just like i don't know it, it's just uh like cool to see it i think i like i said before um we started like just like congratulations because it's like truly like I don't know, an album to be celebrated. And I'm very thankful that um because I caught wind of it through the swim camp uh, S uh Spotify bio. Uh that oh, is yeah. just <laughs> yeah, that is just listen to Greg Mendez. And that was uh weirdly enough the day that the album released. 
And uh, yeah, so I checked it out. And I was like, I was like, oh God, like, you know, like this feels like targeted uh, <laughs> towards me. But um, like, you know, very thankful that, you know, the album has gotten the response that it has because one, it exposes a lot more people to the art that you make. Like, you know, people around you like Swim Camp and Shannon Moser, like, you know, a scene that others might not be necessarily exposed to and also like allows us to uh, go back into your discography. So yeah, once again, congratulations. Thanks. I'll have to tell Tom that you found it like that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> it worked. It, it is effective whenever, like, people do do that, I will say. Yeah, that but, was, like, uh, one of the nicest, uh, one of the nice. I, I saw, he just, like, posted that on Twitter. And I was like, damn, that's really nice. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's really, it's also, like, a thing that, like, I know, like, inactive bands do. Like, I can think of uh, Wyatt Smith who just has a new band called Cage World, but still makes music under Wyatt Smith, and their bios just listen to Cage World. So I was like, is Swim Camp still a thing? Like, question mark, question mark. But... Yeah, he's still doing it. He just came out with a record a couple months ago in, like, February, I think. Really good, too. Hell yeah. No, I, I enjoyed it a lot. So shout out Tom. <laughs> shout out Tom. Yeah, so I think just, like, you know, like, to just kind of, like, wrap up, like, all of the talking about, like, especially, like, the emotional relationship uh, to it, I, like, really liked one of the quotes that is, like, this is toxic, and I think this is good, be because it's just, like, a very real way of, like, I think portraying, like, the intricacies of, like, relationships and like moments and i you know really enjoy the like the embrace and the ownership of that as like a listener and so i guess just the question that i have even like regarding like the response like a very like kind of like mixed but mostly positive feelings is like what does it look like moving forward with your music and your art after you know the release of the self titled um i mean i think i'm just gonna try to just you know just keep doing stuff the way that i do it i guess like i haven't really been um thinking about it too much um i'm trying to like you know yeah i don't know i mean i think oh, i'm getting a bunch of text um i don't know <laughs> to be honest um what is it can you like um clarify a little bit on the question exactly well i guess just like you know because i felt that like whenever i've like released like something of like my own mainly like because it's like i do theater and whenever i've had like you know, positive response to like a play or like something I've directed or made, there is like, you know, it always comes down to the battle of just like not taking like positive response or like compliments like too much. Like, you know, not like getting in my head about it, you know? Yeah, yeah. And, um, and I guess just like, you know, while you're being like barraged with that response. And I've seen on your Instagram, on Twitter, so many people being like, when are you going to play like the UK? <laughs> or just like, um, you know, like all of like the big come to Brazil things that it's just like, you know, like right now, is it just like everything's gone? Like, do you see everything keeping the same pace? that it's kept beforehand or like any like radical changes you want to make, if that makes sense. Um, yeah. I mean, I think, you know, I don't, I mean, the answer to all those like come to the UK stuff is that like, I don't have any money, so I don't see that. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but um, yeah, I mean, I think I was like a little worried for a minute that it might like go to my head, but honestly, like all the, um, it just kind of feels more like a drug, if anything, like when it's like filtered through the internet, like, um, 
I think that'll die down. Like, I think that the internet's pretty quick to like focus on new things. And I don't expect, you know, this to be a continuous thing. And I think that's probably good because uh, it's a little distracting, honestly, to like try and um, not that I'm like, I'm grateful for it, but Mm. like looking at it from an objective like view, like I kind of don't want to like have it take up too much of my brain space because then like, you know, I want to start thinking about, you know, working on another record and like doing stuff like that. And I feel like, um, that kind of that like the attention can be distracting from that i think word yeah no i i feel that and i think um you know that's like it's a good point where like almost just kind of like hoping and like kind of knowing that like it will eventually like die down in like in due time so you don't have to like do all the rounds and like repost so much and then you can just like focus on yourself and like i want people to still buy records and stuff because (laughs) that's that's nice that like makes it easier for me to do another one but Mm -hmm. you know i don't know maybe that sounds like ungrateful and i'm definitely not but it just kind of like it is it is hard like the social media aspect of it i think can be really distracting for me Mm -hmm. um especially as somebody who's like not particularly who hasn't been like, like I haven't been online historically, you know, like that. Um, yeah. Meanwhile, so like they're like, I'm oh, sorry. Uh, yeah. Cause I think like, you know, especially now a lot of like DIY and like indie music, like a good chunk of them blow up because like the person's so persistent on social media about like listening to their music and this is like at least like the response and the reception to the self-titled has just like really felt like word of mouth yeah which is i mean which is honestly great like i'm super thankful that like i haven't been able i haven't had to like post about it every day um Mm. but um yeah i can't I'm really thankful for that because that, I mean, that, you know, at the last one, I felt like I had to do that more. And it was also really, you know, it's just like another thing to, like, I just like making the songs, you know, the whole, like, I think it kind of sucks that we have to be like, you know, have to grab this megaphone and like, you know, do that, do that for ourselves too in, in 2023. So <laughs> no that's a that's just like a, i guess a real way to feel and handle it and i guess it's like you know thank you for like being willing and wanting to just like you know just like not like open up about it but just like being upfront about it so like you know like yeah just thank you for everything your art and you know, just talking about this. Yeah, I mean, I you know, I, I'm I like talking. I, I'm enjoying this. This is this to me feels different than like you know, mm. posting about vinyl on Twitter. <laughs> right? Yeah, no. <laughs> or just uh, finding new ways to meme your own album for people to listen or to buy it on Bandcamp. Yeah. 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 Uh, I guess just like one last question before we move on to advice questions sent in by listeners. Um, I guess uh, I one of my favorite lines from the record is uh, in best behavior. And it's just that, that opening line of you got the radio playing and all I can think is to change it to some shit I hate. And um, yeah. I guess uh, I was like, like, what are you changing it to? What's some shit that you hate that you also feel comfortable saying that you hate? <laughs> um, <laughs> oh, I don't know. It depends on who else is in the car. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's more like like something that they don't like more. And, you know, it doesn't matter if I don't like it. Um, I don't know. I don't really. I kind of hate most of the things on the radio, to be honest, at this point. <laughs> 
<laughs> That's <Yeah>. fair. <laughs> yeah, just fucking just hitting uh doing like hitting scan on the radio and or like scan or like seek whichever button where it just doesn't stop changing channels after like we'll play a channel for like five seconds and then just switches to the next one. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I feel like any, like, I mean, there's some good, like, you know, pop songs still, but I feel like uh, most of the stuff on like top 40, I don't really care for. And I don't really like the, a lot of the pop country now. Yeah. Like getting more and more like electronic and stuff. Like, Eh, it's not for me. Yeah, uh, I, uh, that's that's valid. Pop country is also just a very strange genre. I also think with like just like now with like what country songs talk about, as opposed to like you know at the start of the genre where it's like you hear country songs about like ripping dab pens, and then you'll just like. Here, like ripping electric guitar and this is like I, I don't know where to place this actually <laughs> yeah, and there's like trap beats on it now yeah <laughs> it's like is this 808 um <laughs> with like someone with like a huge southern drawl but it's like okay. mm-hmm. yeah, it's around. really kind of bizarre yeah <laughs> all right well uh thank you so much again and then yeah, and then we'll happily get into the questions. So once again, listen to self or Greg Mendez by Greg Mendez out on Forged Artifact. Yeah, Forged Artifacts and Devil Town Tapes. Hell yeah. Go buy a vinyl. Uh so yeah, thank you so much. And we'll be back oh so soon. Talk to y'all later. I have met a number of friends online, especially since COVID. 
One of these friends is a guy I became attracted to. He makes me laugh, he's kind, and I genuinely have a good time talking to him. Although we had been friends for the better part of a year, our communication was only ever through text. While he had seen photos of me, I had no idea what he looked like. I don't consider myself to be a shallow person. I have always believed it's what's on the inside that counts. Well, we finally video chatted last night, and I have no attraction to him at all. I tried convincing myself that the lack of attraction wasn't a big deal, but I couldn't do it. There's nothing wrong with the way he looks. He's just a lot older than I thought and drastically different from what I pictured. I feel like a terrible person and have been berating myself all day. How dare I suddenly dislike this wonderful guy who I had a connection with over such a tiny reason? Honestly, I also feel embarrassed for for having gotten my emotions involved without knowing anything about him. I don't want to hurt him, especially since the reason behind it is so petty and would be so harmful if he knew. Am I a terrible person? What should I do? Hmm. Well, I don't think you're a terrible person. Um, I think, I mean, that's a tough situation because, and I don't think it's really anything to do with being shallow either. Um, I think that when it comes to like a, you know, that kind of romantic or like sexual relationship, I think attraction is just like, a big part of what separates that from like a more platonic relation. And I think that there's not really much you can do to like, like you don't really get to pick who you're attracted to. And in my experience, at least, I don't think it's really helpful to try and force an attraction that's not there. And like, you know, I think that, um redefining the relationship to a, like a way that makes that makes sense for you and that feels good i think it's probably not only the right thing to for you to do but for the other person as well cuz i mean i think it would be more harmful to like try and hide the fact that you're not really into it in that way and that doesn't like and it doesn't negate like this like emotional and like you know, connection that you've had from talking to this person, like it just, you know, it just changes the nature of the relationship. And I think that that's totally natural and normal and like that shit happens. Mm -hmm. I think that's really it. Yeah, I like, yeah, because it definitely feels like, yeah, for you, the listener, it's like, It's definitely just, like, not worth... I guess it's just, like, two things. And a question for you, Greg, is, like... One, it's, like, it's just not, like, necessarily worth, you know, like, forcing that. Because it's just, like, you know, like... By the start, if you, like, force it, then just, like, inherently... It is, like, an inauthentic, like... um, Unreal relationship. And I think, like... You know, especially with, like, the later questions, uh, the, you know, the whole line of, like, I don't want to hurt him, especially since the reason behind it is so petty and would be so harmful if he knew. And I, like, I I don't know if it's hinted that they've, like, you know, that you've started, like, a romantic relationship with him already, but I guess just... uh the the question for you greg is that like you know if the listener were to like you know like not force it and like take your advice and just like kind of like can it like would it be necessary to say like the reason why is because i don't find you physically attractive like the real reason like you know how would you go about that without like necessarily like lying to them um i i you know i probably wouldn't i wouldn't say anything that would be like 
unnecessarily hurtful. Like if it's if it can be avoided, then maybe I would try to avoid it. Um, but if it's like not, you know, I mean, I also just like you know, I think it's okay to just be like, you know, I'm not like I realized I'm like not into you in that way. And yeah, I guess maybe there is no like indication of whether the whether the relationship is romantic yet and you know the internet makes everything tough (laughs) (laughs) um because like you never have this problem without it like you're you're, you meet somebody and immediately you know whether like and then even like even just a video call like i feel like so much of attraction is like you know how just like the the chemistry of like being in the same space as somebody and like you know their like body language and all this stuff and like all these cues are missing if you're even on video chat but especially if it's just like text-based uh communication so i think it leaves a lot of like situ like openings for a situation like this and i mean you know yeah i don't think that you might not have to be like i'm not attracted to you maybe you could just be like you know i'm not not really feeling this I don't mm. think I don't think anybody has to give reasons for why like I mean like you know romantic or sexual relationships are just like a really personal thing and I think a lot of times we don't actually even understand what's going on with like what we want or don't want it's just kind of like a feeling but the feeling is like I don't know in my experience you really can't go against it cuz you're just going to be I mean that that's like the one thing that I would strongly suggest that you shouldn't do is like try and fight that because it's just gonna come back worse later and like cause more harm yeah it's like it's it's interesting that you like brought it up that way because it's like something i would agree and um you know genuinely like a question that like this podcast has has received from like listeners because you'll have questions like this and then you'll have like other questions where people like try to ask like such huge big idea things and um you know a big one is like what is love and like how do you know like uh what love is and i think like you know i guess it's like you say or just like attraction and like that intimacy is like yeah, it's just simply like a bodily understanding and it's like not really worth it to like wage war against it. So I like I like how you know, I guess just like how you put that and like how you recommended it. It's just like, yeah, you're also the other person for listener like he's not entitled to like really like know your inner workings. It's just simply something that is. Yeah, and I don't, I don't think it, I really don't think it's shallow. Like I just think that like attraction is a huge part of like that. You know, like there are other there are other types of relationships for somebody that you like really connect with and enjoy, but don't feel that type of attraction to. And like you know, I, I think <laughs> it's like one of the huge things that separates that is just that feeling. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so definitely, like, do not, like, beat yourself up about it, because I think just, yeah, you're not shallow. It's, like, funny to think about that, because I didn't even really, like, come to mind where it's just, like, you know, if you're shallow for not finding this this dude attractive, then it's, like, are you, like, then shallow for not finding, like, most of your friends attractive? But... Uh, yeah, no, I, yeah, so, you know, you're, you're completely in safe, I guess in safe arms and in safe hands. And yeah, if, if you feel the need to, um, you know, if you feel the need and if you genuinely know that this is not what your body or mind wants for some unexplainable reasons and, you know, then just go with it go with your gut um yeah. uh, do you have any song recommendations that you believe will 
help this person feel better and make them feel not shallow about how they feel. Um, yeah, I thought of some songs. I don't know if they're like exactly literal or like if they'll help, but um, a song called Mine First by Shalom and a song called Give by Lowercase Roses. I feel like both those songs just kind of make me feel good. Uh, Mine First is kind of like a, it's a sad song about like a a breakup, I think, but um, it kind of makes me feel good also. And I don't exactly know what Give deals with, but something about it just, you know, makes me feel good in a specific way. Word. Hell yeah. Uh, I guess... Any final words for this listener, Greg? Um, yeah, just trust yourself. Hell yeah. And you're I'm doing good. I'm... You're doing okay. <laughs> you're doing good. Hoping you're doing okay. Um... <laughs> oh, that's another song. But um, yeah, I'll just echo that sentiment. Keep your head up. You'll do okay. And just trust what your body, mind, and heart wants. So um, up first, we'll play Mind First by Shalom. And then, or, yeah. And then Give by Lowercase Roses. Thank you so much. And I genuinely hope that helped. But if it didn't, you can just let us hear back. All right. Thank you and sending you love. This is Mind First by Shalom.
I feel almost a nostalgic feeling towards depression sometimes. Like when I feel that real depression kick in, it's a familiar feeling and sometimes I lean into it. Like, yeah, let's get depressed tonight and just crash. I know it sounds weird, but it's real. I kind of feel like that's what being emo is. It's that nihilistic bliss. Do you get what I'm feeling? Sometimes depression feels like a warm blanket and I like it. I guess my question is, do you relate to that? Is that a normal feeling to have? What should I do about it? Um Yeah, I do I do relate to that. I definitely have I definitely have felt like that in the past. Um not so much recent like, you know, I don't think I like lean into it as hard recently but definitely like when I was in my, my when I was a teenager in like early 20s I think like I feel like maybe it's a, a coping mechanism like to kind of romanticize it and I think I think people do that a lot with like a lot of stuff like I know I used to do that with addiction too and depression and like you know just kind of like listen to sad music and like you know, just kind of like try and like revel in it or like create a, you know. Yeah, I, I know what you mean. Um, whether it's what should I do about it? I mean, I don't know. I guess the question that you have to ask yourself is like, do you feel like this is impacting you negatively? Like, do you feel, do you feel like de- depression is, uh medical condition like well i guess one i'm just a loser musician and i'm not qualified to really particularly answer this question so i guess my <laughs> my real advice would be to like if you feel like you're experiencing depression and like different symptoms of that would be to talk to somebody who is qualified but besides <laughs> that um besides that like i think with things like this it's like what is like with coping mechanisms in particular it's like is it is it helping or hurting like do you feel like when you lean into it and kind of enjoy it like does it make your depressive periods more intense or longer or does it feel like it kind of shortens them and like makes it easier does it does it make it harder easier to like do the things that you have to do in your life like how is it how is like there's nothing wrong with like feeling a certain way about something you know what i mean like it's the like what's the effect i guess is the thing that's important to look at it um but i don't think it's weird i do i can relate to it and i would say that um i also don't know what i'm talking about <laughs> I, I so I guess just like a, a question for you because um you know it um I think like first of all I think just like gr- like great advice about like you know just kind of like recognizing you know like what you um you know like recognizing like like what is truly harmful and it's like you know and then like what's okay like it's okay to like listen to sad music but then if you're like feeling like the genuine effects of depression it's like you know it's like okay like yeah perhaps you should go to qualified professionals and i think like yeah and and that's the thing that also just kind of like comes up here as well because it's just like like in no way is this meant to be like a replacement for therapy um because uh like you said, like you're unqualified. I'm unqualified. Like, uh, and so I guess just the, the, I, uh, like question for you. And I don't know if I like know how to like 
like articulated exactly but like i guess just it's like how do you like feel about like you know like with like friends and stuff about like you know like discourse about and like discussion about like sadness and like depression and like mental health like is it like a thing where like do you just like often defer to like much like the like you know like oh like this is kind of like violating the the boundaries of friendships and i am like not qualified to speak on this whatsoever defer or like i don't know guess just like how do you feel about like yeah that discussion if that makes sense that was kind of word salad i apologize no no i get you um i think among friends like it's like i'm it's a little easier like i don't know the person who asked this question and i've never met them so i don't know where they're at and what their like situation is like if it's my friend like i feel a lot more comfortable like i know more about their life i know whether they're already like you know talking to somebody about like talking to somebody who's not me and like it just feels a little like it it feels like like in a situation like this it feels like almost dangerous to me to give um advice about depression to a complete stranger um yeah. without that caveat uh, <laughs> but like yeah i would say it's like a little a little different in like my personal life right. does that make sense that does make sense i also <laughs> <laughs> yeah that's like a... <laughs> i don't know what this like i don't know where this person's at you know like are they like getting to a dangerous place by um you know, leaning into this, or is it more of like, you know, just a kind of a like a way that they deal with it that's not like I don't, I don't know. So it feels a little right. like there feels like there's a little more weight to it from my perspective here. Yeah, um, I think that's a good point, and I I was just laughing at it because I was just like, I think this is like the first time I realized this about just like yeah like the podcast is only like 12 episodes in but like it's been like a question answering form for like you know three years that like you saying that i'm like oh yeah this does feel a bit reckless actually <laughs> um, no, i don't think it's reckless to like i don't think it's reckless or it doesn't have to be but i i that answer like giving this giving like advice to this question feels like it would be a little reckless on my part without that like caveat that's fair uh i think um uh not to okay it's not to violate anonymity and i like won't even say this person's name but this was a uh, sent by someone who like is a friend who did ca- catch word and i like you know like if i can guarantee that like they're and they like talked about it first because they sent it in video form and i'm just like reading like the text form of it that like you know if it's not like the that i like i can guarantee that it's like not the latter where they're at like a like a dangerous point in life or like you know like i kind of know that they're like overall like pretty like safe in their surroundings so i guess just like with like that guarantee and like that caveat like would that still be more like would that change the circumstances or is it still just like yeah probably will be like seek help if if you feel like you need it i mean that's still in there you know but um Mm. i mean then like you know everything else i still said still stands like you know I don't think it's, I don't think it's a weird feeling. Like I get that. I feel like, um, I definitely think it's a normal like response to depression. And like, I I think it's like only harmful if it's, if it's harmful. Like I feel like sometimes in my experience, like doing that and just kind of like, you know, like going in, like just kind of, going with it rather than like like can be helpful and then like sometimes it's not 
like but yeah i don't i don't think it's weird or like bad if that makes sense oh yeah no, i think you know i yeah i guess just to like answer like the core of the question uh for you my friend and listener it's like yeah it's a, it's a normal feeling to have and i feel like you know, as long as you're in, like, safe, like, circumstances and webs, you know, like, there's not, there's not much to concern about it, but if um, there is something to concern, you always have resources to reach out to and check. Um, so, yeah, I guess, do you have any song recommendations for them, Greg? Yeah, and these are, these are kind of songs that might help you lean into it. Um <laughs> <laughs> Hell yeah. <laughs> um what's it called? Um Please Not Today by Sun Organ. Really great Philly band record just came out on the same day that mine did. One of my favorites. Um that's the last song on the record. And then Forever by Shannon Moser from their most recent record, also a Philly artist. Hell yeah. Uh yeah, I I think I'll actually second the Forever by Shannon Moser, and we'll just, like, add on to that. Listen to them. Listen to Shannon Moser. Listen to Swim Camp. Listen to Greg Mendez. Uh, listen to everybody. Yeah, listen to everybody. And also just shout out Philly. Um, yeah, for real. Yeah, I guess, do you have any final words for this listener before we go into the music and then send this interview off? Um, yeah, you know, whatever, like, I feel like, I don't know. I just feel like none of, like, I feel like that's a common, a common thing that I've experienced and I know other people do. And like, I feel like that's part of the reason why, like, you know, music that feels sad exists and like other things like, you know, sad movies and like, just like sometimes it just feels good to like just like be in your feelings if it's like you know i mean obviously there's like bad ways to do that and then like other ways which are just like kind of okay and um yeah that's really it hell yeah you know second to that be in your feelings if you also desire and just care for and protect your heart and realize that there are other people caring for and protecting your heart. Uh, genuinely, from the bottom of my heart, thank you so much, the listener, and thank you so much, Greg, for hopping on and answering these questions. Yeah, thanks for having me. I really appreciate it. Yeah, of course. It means a lot. And, you know, the the self-titled is truly something like i'm glad it's getting the response it currently gets because just like as as a listener it's just it deserves it what a fucking incredible album so thank you dude thank you so much yeah okay so we're gonna play into please not today by sun organ and then forever by shannon moser thank you all so much i love you and i care for you and we love you and we care for you. And we'll talk to y'all oh so soon. See you next time. Bye bye.
Forever. Mm-hmm.